Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to do part two of food allergies. I react to everything, right? On the last video, we talked about the loss of oral tolerance, right? The inability to eat a variety of different foods because you have reactions to them. We ex explained some of the mechanisms of how dendritic cells uh, in the stomach or the small intestine will sample proteins and have an adverse reaction to it or an immune response to it, uh, leading to uh, adverse reactions like itchy skin, bloating, brain fog, uh, digestive issues, and so forth. So we're gonna do part two. So the loss of oral tolerance, overactive dendritic cells, right? One way to improve that is to improve protein breakdown. And I explained that by using uh, things like digestive enzymes uh, and HCL to break down your proteins better into its components, smaller components, so the dendritic cells don't become overreactive. Another way to improve overactive dendritic cells is to improve secretory IgA. Secretory IgAs are basically antibodies found in the lining of the small intestine and they will attach to foreign protein or protein that's not supposed to be there like large uh, food proteins right and it will decide whether it's going to have an immune response to it but what it also does is as the secretory IgA uh, binds to the protein or, or attaches to it it kind of surrounds it so the dendritic cells can't really sample it and have an overt immune response so it prevents the dendritic cells from becoming overactive, right? So it's a way of protecting it. Oftentimes people have what we call low secretory IgA because of either uh, prolonged steroid use, uh, chronic health conditions, di digestive issues, uh, poor immune function, or chronic infection. So uh, checking your secretory IgA and then also uh, raising it to a proper level will help protect um, your immune system to a certain extent uh, from having an overreaction, especially from the dendritic cells, right? So there are other components to this. So if we're looking to improve oral tolerance, other than the dendritic cells, we can also improve what we call regulatory T cells, right? Because that determines the immune response as well as the inflammatory response. So the regulatory T cells are responsible to determine when things happen, am I going to have a overt response or, or are we gonna just chill out and be okay with it? Things that impact T cells or T regulatory cells are things uh, like fish oil, right? Omega-3 fatty acids or vitamin D as well as glutathione. And we had a, lo a long uh, video series on glutathione and NAC. So I want you to go back and watch it, uh, that video. And then short chain fatty acids, things like butyrate, propanate, and acetate. We also made a video on butyrate, so go ahead and you can watch that video. But these nutrients can be very helpful in improving T cell response so you don't have an overt reaction and an inflammatory response. And the reason that's really important is because if you have inflammation, that perpetuates other problems, right? Uh, cytokine, uh, cascades, etc. Now, we also have to improve liver function. Why do we improve liver function for gut problems, let's say, or oral tolerance issues? It's because when the dendritic cells sample these proteins, they also go to the liver and then it'll have a response of what we call the cuffer cells of the liver. And that can cause an inflammatory response through the liver. So we want the liver functioning at a high level, making sure all the methylation, glucuronidation, sulfation, all these processes that occur through the liver are working properly to reduce the um, immune response due to dendritic cells. Another thing you can do is diversify your gut, right? Oftentimes what happens is that you get limited in the number of food items that you can eat. Therefore, 
you respond to pretty much everything. So improving gut flora, meaning you can take probiotics, but you can also use it, uh, you can improve it by taking in additional fiber. So what we're talking about is uh, diversifying the gut slowly by using what we call the veggie mash or vegetable mash. So you're taking vegetables that you typically maybe not eating, and then you chop them into small pieces and to take small amounts of it and blend it, right? Not juice it, but blend it so you have the fiber component of it. In the beginning, you might only just take a teaspoon of it uh, uh, every day. Um, but over time, you should be able to get to like a half a glass of a, a, a vegetable smoothie. And you can put other things in there to help um, uh, diversify the gut. But a, a vegetable mash is a very good way to uh, start the initiation of diversifying it. Because over time, you need to increase your food varieties um, because if you don't, you're always going to have this over immune response and you're going to have loss of oral tolerance and you're going to have less foods that you can actually eat. So it's very important to do that. So let's go ahead and recap. We have to improve dendritic cell function, right? Using digestive enzymes, um, HCL. You also have to improve secretory IgA function. And one way we can improve secretory IgA function is taking a high dose of vitamin A in retinol form, right? You can take in up to 5,000 international units of it. Um, and then we have to improve uh, T regulatory cells as well as liver function and diversify the gut. So we've kind of recapped uh, what we can do to improve oral tolerance issues. Um, so you can go ahead and you know, research some of this because this is not a topic that is often spoken about. Uh, oral tolerance. We just think that we have a food allergy and the food allergy is, you know, I can't, I have to avoid all these foods. That may not be the issue, right? One of the tests that we use in this office to determine if maybe a patient might have loss of oral tolerance is a lab called Cyrex Labs and they use a uh, IgG and IgA response for food. So what they do is they'll check like 150 different foods, right? Cooked and uncooked. And let's say you do the test and you react to like 80 of them. 80 different foods, all of a sudden you have an immune response to. That is a pretty classic example of someone who's lost oral tolerance. The inability to digest the foods uh, normally without having an immune response. So they have reactions to many, many, many types of foods uh, which they shouldn't have. So they've lost their oral tolerance. So those are the patients we want to go through this process of uh, addressing dendritic cell issues, liver function, uh, diversifying the gut, right? It's very important to do that because there's a lot of people that, who are actually suffering from this condition, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.